classy. This episode is so classy. Thank you for that music. It just makes me feel amazing. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of tech people on the show before, but one thing we never have been able to do is get somebody from the gaming industry. And considering we're in Vegas, um, we're really excited to finally get somebody who has a good inside knowledge of really what it's like to have a tech company, especially one that's forward thinking and has experience in the industry that made Las Vegas what it is. And uh, why don't you just put your hands together? Because we have Lawrence Vaughn here from Real Gaming. Come on out. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Have a seat. Sure. All right. So um, I want to start just by talking about your entrepreneur history and you as a person. So what, uh, like, tell me about yourself. Like, um, you got any uh, interesting yeah. stories? Like, uh, are you a normal kid? Anything weird? Pretty normal. Yeah, I okay. was born here in Las Vegas. So okay, good. So you're local. Grew up, watched the whole town change and watched the investment of this downtown. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so when did you start? When was the first time you considered yourself an entrepreneur? How did the story start? Um, probably about nine years ago. So I, I broke off and, and started doing an employment website, actually, at the time. And what ended up happening was shortly after we got to market and started figuring out how to run a business, uh, the, the recession happened. So no, okay. it wasn't too right, long. Right. So we started to get traction. We Then we were able to bring in partners. And, and um, it was a big uphill battle, though. We went to a lot of people to raise money. And you know how the story goes. We, we never right, got, we right. actually never got any uh, investment initially. We did it um, bootstrap. We got the, the traffic to where it needed to be. And then we were approached, actually. Okay, so at the time, was everybody working just on equity, or were you able to create just enough revenue to balance it out? Um, yeah, so at first, it was just whatever we could save we were putting into it from other, our other work, and um, then we, we ended up making enough money that we could just do that only. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. so let's talk about the legality about it, because I you know every time you hear somebody say like they're running some kind of gambling website, you hear that it's like an offshore gambling website or something strange sure, so like... Where were you on that spectrum? Were you so when I left that business, um, I, I left that to, to move into the online oh, right, poker right. space, right? So uh, the opportunity came up that the laws would be changing here to allow for the right type of framework for a regulated online poker site. And so what we did was we we looked at the space, and I ended up getting connected um, very fortunately with uh, Michael Gon, who is a big Vegas legend. Right. He owns the South Point. And we identified that there was a bit of a need, because if you look in the space, uh, what you see is there's a lot of these older, sort of 10-year-old, 15-year-old, shoddy platforms that are out there being right. marketed from, from, from Europe to casinos who want to be in the space but aren't sure what to do. So he and I got a, an opportunity to talk, and we thought, you know, it makes sense to do it if you can offer a product to the customer that they want. Right. And, and he, he has a good reputation with local gamers. So we thought, let's build something where we can react from, from the ground up, but react at a relatively high frequency to what the customer wants. So, mm. um, Okay, because yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the big chunk of the conversation, like to talk about the culture. But like real quick before we go there, um, talk to me about like when you knew you wanted to switch industries from the other company to that. Like, Was there a moment where you said you were reading a newspaper article and um, you said, oh, look, it's like gambling's coming, and then you just researched it and then felt like it was the right move? Or could you walk me through your brain as yeah, you went well, through that process? What, what actually um, was happening was I was talking to casinos around the country for employment, the employment side, just trying to oh, right, right. Set. Oh, okay. And right, I started right, right. realizing that there was a need for this poker thing. And I, I just sort of started doing it as a side project, by just coding it by myself, right? So what not, you know, by that time we had developers in the other company and everything, but this was a side project. So, um, I happened to get a coincidence, a call from someone I've known for a long time at, uh, at, the, at one of the properties uh, here in town. And he said, you know, we're looking at a European thing. Do you know anything about the space? And I said, well, it's really weird. Let me come in and show you what I have. We did, we actually closed the deal in 10 days. The, the whole structure, we created a new company. And it just was, really. The, the timing, it was very fortunate timing and the visions aligned. What he wanted to do and what I wanted to do were essentially the same. So, so a lot of our audience is sort of small business or entrepreneur. Like, what kind of was happening in your gut at the time? Like, when they're trying to evaluate whether they should jump into a project like that, what was the kind of trigger moment that made you think, like, yeah, this is right? Well, I knew, I knew that you know, gaming is a good business, and to be in an environment where you can operate with a privileged license is half the battle. With the employment side. 
it was a big learning curve because you're competing in an it's an unregulated space. There's a, sort of a chicken and egg problem with resumes, job seekers, uh, job postings, and so on. So uh, I realized in this space there's there's demand for this. It had just been shut down. So this okay. is something we know is proven and works here. Uh, but no one had done it with new stuff. It was all like I played you know full tilt and the other sites when they were around and platforms were uh, like you antiquated. Could you could imagine a better experience. And yeah, and like that's when that we sort of clicked, figured yeah. we could contribute in that sense to it, and then eventually accelerate past okay. what everyone was doing. Okay, so so with the last couple of minutes, I want to talk yeah. to you about, um, uh, about the culture. Like, you talked to me before about how you have to think about what you're doing, and if it's the standard for gambling, is it actually a standard because it's the best thing that, that the standard could be, or is it just the fact that the guy before you did it and the guy before you did it, and now you do it too? So how do you so build yeah, that into your culture to like couple, couple question pieces. everything? There's there's the regulatory aspect, which is about 70% of the software product itself that we had to develop and is an ongoing development, and you know we're strict compliance stuff from gaming. So you look at that, and in, in our case, most of the regulations were new or, or predicated on uh, old, old regulations. Um, what you had to do was you had to look at it and, and sort of determine how do you build software for this and then how do you build um, procedures around this that haven't been done before or if the way that it has been done before is the right way. On, on the non-regulatory aspect, more the company culture side, uh, what you got to look at is uh, is the way that and, and a segment of industry, uh, is the way that they do something the right way and then if not, how do you reinvent it? Or if so, stick yeah, but to you it, need the so. employees thinking that way, right? It's not just like the manager is like, "Hey, rethink this." Like you need the people, like you need the culture to say, "Like I need to question even the, well, the, the things the boss is telling me to do." That's enough. So you get a lot of people that are very. Um, everyone gets used to. We all are all do it. Sort of used to a routine and what you do each day, and so you do get a lot of people, especially people that are are, are good and have been in industry for a long time that are very reluctant to, to move yeah. away from, from what they do. So what I attempted to do, and I think we've done a pretty good job at it, is get people in the mindset that whatever we did last week isn't necessarily the best thing. It's oh, okay to yeah. dump it, and you're successful if you find a reason to dump it, not the other way around where it's a threat. To you a see, I wanted to talk job. about that too. Like I remember I watched a TED Talk a little while ago where they, they in a study they had people create something out of Legos, a little toy, and then they took it apart in front of them and it really depressed people. Like sure, it was yeah. it was a negative thing. But when they take it and they put it up on the shelf, people were like, they felt a lot better. So if you're trying to tell your employees like build something that we might throw away and it's gonna get scrapped, how are you keeping them motivated? Well, the goal is really how do you do something better and you're better in and of yourself if, if you can find that solution. So it's not that the thing that I did last week was good and I have a sentimental attachment to whatever that thing is. It's that you're, you've moved forward, you've progressed as an individual if you can mm. find out how to make something more efficient, how to destroy what the I Legos see. So you've got, yeah, so you gotta focus on like, like you should be proud that you put the Legos together and think of all the things you learned from it and how you're growing towards your goal yeah. kind of thing, so. Okay. Yeah, so it's, but it's been interesting from the gaming side, there's a lot of people that because we were sort of a coming together of new talent and gaming people. Right, yeah, the total mix, gaming yeah. And, and Vegas, you were at Apple Orange's situation, yeah. 30 years in the industry, so that was new for yeah. us, but yeah. That's where a lot of great stuff comes from. Okay, so tell everybody, like, where can they check out your website? Sure, so and, it's uh, uh, realgaming.com, R-E-A-L gaming.com, HTML5 poker. You can play it on any device, and uh, we've got a lot of new stuff coming. So. Yeah, you're an inspiring entrepreneur. Thank you to come today. Give him a round of applause. Appreciate the advice. <laughs> That's perfect, right at 904. The perfect timed interview. Thank you. The internet, the world's most amazing tool to stare at adorable cats like all day. But it doesn't have to be that way, really. Tracky helps you connect, collaborate, and get stuff done. It's a social way to organize your personal and professional life. Inspire the people you work with. And inspire yourself to enjoy more of life's little things. And when the work is done, Tracky helps you plan and play. Gather your friends, have some fun. And make sure your plans are awesome. Fun, easy. Nobody needs to worry about bears this time around.
A long day and a fun night deserve the thwack of a high five. Welcome to Tracky, the tool where everything and everyone in your life works together in harmony. Connect, collaborate, done.